Yes, guys, I'm Si. Welcome to Cardiff City World. Welcome to your Wales versus Poland preview. The playoff final is here nearly. Uh, this Tuesday night, Wales take on Poland in a massive game to see which of the two countries will uh, join a host of other nations at the Euros this summer in Germany. It's going to be a massive game. Both teams dominated uh, their semi-finals. Wales versus uh, Finland and Poland versus Estonia, respectively. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting, and very interesting fixture. Uh, I don't think it'll be nil nil. I've got to say, two attacking teams. Um, both teams, I think, have got some weaknesses defensively, and they almost look at it as a best form of defence is attack. Certainly in Wales's case, I feel that they need to adjust, address, or certainly defend better than they did against Finland at certain points. It wasn't terrible, but there was little moments where I feel that Wales needed to maybe do a little bit better in terms of how they defended certain situations. Um, and the, the small bit of highlights that I saw from Poland, uh, I thought it was pretty similar, actually. There was there was some certainly some areas that I feel, from a, as a Welshman, that Wales could potentially exploit or, or try to exploit so it's, it's kind of interesting to me it's obviously a, a very big game lots to discuss uh if you're new to the kind of the preview ways we do the previews and stuff within uh within the channel and within ace podcast nation we take a look at both teams we look at their predicted starting lineups tactics things like that about half an hour or so um but with a spot in uh, the euro 2024 group d on the line, both Wales and Poland uh, square off in uh, the Cardiff City Stadium Tuesday night. It's the Path A playoff final. It's going to be interesting. Look, Wales, without being arrogant or anything like that, they made very light work of Finland on uh, Thursday evening. It was 4-1. Probably should have been 5, at least. Uh, that goal, which got disallowed, was very, very soft. Uh, and then, equally... Poland make, made equally light work of their opponents in Estonia. Um, and listen, I um, I shared a post earlier on on my personal Facebook page. As a, as a Welshman, I'm 42, and for so long I had come to terms with the fact that Wales were never going to reach a major tournament. Never thought I'd see it in my lifetime. And, uh, you know, this will, if Wales can get past Poland on Tuesday, it'll be the third successive Euros. Um, fourth to fourth tournament in sort of recent times, it's uh, that's massive, massive for, for for someone like myself and, and other Welsh Welsh supporters because we ne we had come to terms with it. We never thought we were going to make it to the to the uh, to the major tournaments. So to see that and it's exciting, exciting times for Wales because you've got this young first team squad with a few uh, experienced players dotted in and around. And then underneath, you've got this exceptional under-21s coming through with so many exciting players, in particular on, I think it was Wednesday last week, you know, Ruben Corwell played for the 21s after coming down from the, the first-team group and excelled. He was absolutely excellent, a goal and assist. Lewis Kumas making his debut, scored a wonderful goal. And, he, you know, they weren't the only two, but they certainly stood out. Um, Ruben Colwell actually has been recalled back into Wales' first team group, which is, I think, the first and foremost, I think is absolutely the right decision. For me, we discussed it on the watch along. Having two keepers on the bench for a knockout game is, is just seems silly. To me, you want as many creative and att attacking options as possible. And the form that Ruben Colwell's been in, I would want him on the bench, even if they don't use him. I would want him on the bench as an option because if Wales need a goal late on, extra time whatever like a young creative attacking player who drives up people works hard defensively as well um it's the sort of player you want on the someone who can make something happen um so yeah it's uh, it's it's gonna be fascinating obviously if you haven't seen it already please do check out the sort of post-match shows that we did after the poland game we had a uh, five things we learned about sorry about the finland game five things we learned from Wales versus Poland, uh, Finland. <laughs> and we also did a, a post-match flower hour where they talked about the game and stuff like that. This Tuesday, uh, for anyone who can't make the game, 
that myself. We can't make it for health uh, issues. So I'll be doing a watch along myself, Roger Giggs, and the Flower Hour boys, Matt and Rob, will be joining us. We'll be watching the game, having a chat, reactions, all that sort of stuff as we do it. So if you're not going to the game or you, you live away or whatever, whatever the reason, come and join us as we do our watch along. But let's move on to we start with the with the opponents so we'll start with poland uh as i mentioned very impressive against estonia uh i think they will feel very much the same as as what we feel it's going to be a very different game versus wales they'll have much more to to deal with uh what was interesting is that they won 5-1 and i don't think Lewandowski scored uh you know who's a, obviously a a world record I think he's one of the world record holders for in terms of goal scored at international levels. He certainly um, is one of the best in the modern era as an out-and-out and out number nine and, and as a goal scorer. And even, you know, even at his age now where he's coming to the end of his career, he will still be a danger. If you give him a sniff anywhere around the box, then, you know, he's putting it away. Um, Poland is a fairly new manager, uh, about a year or so, I think it is, maybe a bit end of that, um, after Santos left, after a very bad period. They're in a bit of a transition period in terms of this squad, but they've still got a lot of quality in there. Um, most recently, they've lined up in a sort of 3 5 2, and with Bednarak being a uh, top quality defender, Kiwaya, uh, David Duic. Gonna butcher some of these names as the back three. Um, and then they got like Frankowski off the right, is a really, really dangerous, dangerous player, very direct, very creative, gets assists and goals. He will uh, be a massive asset, and they will feel that because Nico Williams gets forward so much, that Frankowski can sort of get in behind those spaces and down the side of Wales. Um, and I think. We need a big performance from Ethan Ampadu and Jordan James again. You know, are going to be the double pivot for Wales for years to come. Um, but they need to have that defensive eye on sweeping up and covering. But Ampadu was exceptional against Finland and he did all that and more. His positional sense was just incredible. Um, and then I think you'll probably go with... Um, Matty Cash is obviously is out, so Frankowski will definitely play. Then you You'll have either uh, Zelensky, maybe, maybe uh, Seismanaski, or um, also Moda can drop in there. But I think it'll be Zelensky, Slice, and uh, Petrovsky as the, as the middle three, with Slice sort of pushing up to get in behind the front two. Uh, Zawaleski on the right, and then uh, Sfider Desky up front with Lewandowski. Um, Buska sometimes also plays alongside um, Lewandowski. I think it'll be Swiderski just because of um, some of the, the movement that he'll provide and the legs he'll provide in a pressing sense because Lewandowski won't do a great deal of pressing, but he will play within the, the areas of the box and look to get those shooting opportunities. Obviously, Szczesny will be the goalkeeper. Um, Poland, technically very good. I'd expect their passing to be much more vertical and direct than what Finland. I was very surprised with just how lateral fi Finland's passing was. There was nothing really kind of breaking the lines. They were never able to get utilize that space between midfield and attack. Um, and they, I, I was a bit disappointed with Finland in terms of how I expected them to turn up. I expect Poland to be much, much better. Um, they got three really solid midfielders. Zelinski in, in particular is very good at, at breaking those lines and getting in in the spaces. And I think, as I mentioned, Ethan Ampadu and John James will have to be very aware of what's going in, what's going on behind them. Uh, but you know, they've got the legs, they've got the youth, and I think um, that's where Wales can utilise their their youth. They utilise their energy and aggression in possession but these are top level footballers uh Zelensky plays for for napoli very very good player creates scores aggressive very experienced player 
but again, you know, he's 29. Um, let's have a look at the age of these midfielders. You've got um, Zielinski, aged uh, 29. Very experienced. You know, they're, they're top-level footballers. Um, again, you've got Sal Salais, uh, who plays out in America. He's only 24. Um, he's the creative one. He's the one who will play those little one-twos off Lewandowski, uh, off Svidereski, and kind of try and link up. Um, Petrovsky is, again, uh, the number six is one. Maybe he'll sit a bit deeper, but he's very capable of dictating the play. He's not like your out-and-out -out sort of destroyer, deep player. Um, <coughs> plays in Bulgaria. Again, you know, mid-20s, 20, mid 20, 26 years old. Um, don't think you'll see, like, a lot of attacking movements from him. I think he'll be the one that sits. I might, I might be wrong because I think um, Zielinski is also capable of dictating play from deep. But for me, Petrovsky is the one who will just pull the strings from deep. And that's where uh, Harry Wilson or David Brooks, whoever it is, who kind of play in that, drop into that number 10 space behind the striker. They can do a defensive job on the deeper line, the midfielder of Poland, and just not give him too much time to dictate the play and to play through those lines and try and utilize utilize the spaces uh, down towards uh, down the sides of Wales's team. In terms of player to watch, um, there's a couple. Zelensky for me, Frankowski, as I said, Sidoreski. Lewandowski is the obvious one because he's who he is. He's one of the great number nines of the modern generation. And if you give him a chance, he'll put it away. Um, but just for the sake of being different, I guess, we'll go with Frankowski. It's really, really been impressed with, um, with him. I was impressed with him against Estonia. He just looked a threat all the time whenever he got the ball. Um, he can put in some good crosses. He can link up with the strikers and cut inside. He's, um, but he will do that defensive work as well. He will get back. He's an out one of them, which is a, a kind of out and out wing back. Plays his plays his football in longs, um, and this is where maybe I feel that, without being disrespectful, maybe Wales can can utilise their their youth and their exuberance and their energy and their their average age because that. Um, a lot of these Polish players, they play, you know, in the Bulgarian League, the French League, the American League. Some of them play at the absolute top level. Champions League football, you know, Italy playing for Napoli, starting each week. But the vast majority don't. And I feel like, you know, all right, Wales have got a lot of players in the Championship. But the Championship is like a Premier League too in many ways in terms of quality. They have a lot of international footballers in that league every single week is like a high level battle you can't switch off you can't have an all you won't get by in the championship very often you know playing you don't see many teams play badly and and get points if you play badly you you struggle um so i think wales can can i i, I fancy i fancy wales at home against anybody certainly to give them a game um the crowd is electric the crowd never, you know, turns or goes quiet on the players. And I just feel that that can be the advantage, the home advantage. And like I mentioned, the average age. Um, in terms of the way Wales will line up, it's really interesting. I think system-wise, it'll be the same, that sort of 3 four, two, one sort of thing. So we, you, you're out and out wide players will be the wing-backs. You'll have the two sitting in midfield, and then you almost play with like two number tens who have the freedom to just roam into the spaces, link up with the strikers, get in behind, get in the wide areas, drop a bit deeper, um, and that ro that role and that system very very much suits David Brooks and Wilson. The only change potentially I could do the system would be if Kiefer Moore was to start up front. And then I think you may see a more traditional kind of 4 2 3 1. I think it's unlikely that Wales go with that. The main reason I think it's unlikely is that 
uh, Poland play with wing backs, so I can see us kind of matching up with the wing backs. And I do like the way <coughs> the way Wales line up created that box midfield with the pit the double pivot at the base and then the two number tens because it, it allows you to create an overload in the centre of the park. And Wales dominated, absolutely dominated the midfield against Finland and largely because they kept creating an overload. But it was also, apart from the overload, which was created, it was the the aggression and the, and the energy which was given because you've got a 19-year-old and Ethan Ampadu, who's early 20s, David Brooks, mid-20s, you know, Harry Wilson, mid-20s. And... The, the great thing for Wales is a lot of these attacking players, they're all banging form for their clubs. And I think that is very exciting for Wales. Even in the, um, even in, you know, when you go into the bench players, um, they are banging form. You know, you've got Kiefer Moore banging form. You've got Ruben Corwell banging form. And it's very difficult then or should I say, it's, it becomes easier to perform at high level when you come off the bench or when you, uh, sorry, uh, when you come off the bench or, or you know when you when you get into these spaces, when you get your opportunity, if you're in form at your club, it'd be a bit easier to naturally. Daniel James is another one came in seamlessly on the weekend and and really looked good. Um, so let's have a look at what I think. So this look, this is what I think the manager will play with, and then I'll kind of say as we're going along what I would do um, in terms of how Wales played against Finland. Um, I thought every single player contributed. Every single player was good. I was a little bit disappointed sometimes with. I thought Connor Roberts gave the ball away a little bit. Um, a little bit cheaply sometimes, but I thought defensively, I thought it was one of his best games and going forward, but just generally in possession, I, I want him to be a bit sharper. Um, the back three or the, the, those centre backs of Meepham, Rodham, and Davis, as it was against Finland, I thought they got caught a little bit flat footed when Finland got in and around the box and they tried these little one twos and link up triangles. And when they tried to get in behind, I thought. Um, Rodon in particular just got caught a little bit flat-footed so he just needs to be a bit more switched on um, against a side of pole because you know like I said you get Lewandowski in behind you it's a goal um, and look that's not to criticise them um, because I thought Rodon you know I thought Meepham Davis I thought they were all had a great you know fine game I thought Ben Davis was very good um, just little moments I think was more than anything where they were just a little bit flat-footed or a little bit cheap with possession. Um, so I think it'll be Danny Ward again. He didn't do anything wrong. I can't see why he would change to Hennessy now. It, it seems like a disruption which wouldn't be needed to the sort of back five. Um, I think you're probably looking at the same same back three. I, I, can't, I can't see a reason why he'd change it. Um, I was a bit concerned before the Finland game that he put Ampadu back in there because Ampadu has been so good for Leeds in the, in the, as a centre back. But I feel that he's Wales' top central midfielder, and I, I absolutely he's a future Wales captain should be in the midfield. So I think it'll be Meepham, Roden, Davis. I think it'll be Connor Roberts with Nico Williams. I, I don't really see a reason to change any of those of those positions. The only potentially one maybe would be a, like if you want it to be a bit more attacking and put uh, like a Daniel James on, on the right hand side. I don't think that's necessary. I've got to be honest. Um, the double pivot in the middle picks itself. Jordan James, Ethan Ampadu, absolute top quality. The future of Welsh football in the middle of the park. Not a problem with either of those two. And I think it, then it just becomes a thing of whether do you go with the target man or do you stick with the pace and the youth and stick with what worked against Finland because what worked against Finland doesn't necessarily work against Poland it might but it might not me personally I thought Wales were so good particularly early on in the game but even late on but particularly that, that I think I'd probably keep the same 11 um, because 
I look at the bench and all right, like Rabbi Matondo is banging form for Rangers. Charlie Savage has been in good form. Daniel James has been excellent, came off the bench, was excellent for Wales. Ramsey's coming back from injury. So to me, the only ones really who you could, if you look at the bench and you obviously got to add Colwell to that, the only ones who are really where you're saying, or oh, could he start? Could you, could I find a place for him in my starting lineup? It's probably Kiefer Moore, maybe Ravi Matondo. Broadhead as well, I think, has been in good form. So, but I don't, like, who do you drop? Like, there's no one really. And I guess what I'm saying is there's no one on the bench where I'm thinking, oh, we could do with him against Poland and got to find a way to get him in. Look, if Ramsey was 100% fit, then of course Ramsey would be in there. Of course he would. But he's nowhere near 100% fit. And I think it would be a massive, massive risk to put him in there. And I also believe that if you put him in there, he almost creates a bit of an issue because he hasn't got the legs of the four that's in that central area. And that was so imperative to the way Wales played against Finland. And I think it could be the difference between us and Poland on Tuesday. I just, I look at that box of James Ampadu, Brooks, Wilson, and I could see them causing the same types of problems to Poland. The only difference I feel will be that Poland do have three sort of, they have a good solid three in the midfield, but they will have to do their, you know, if any of them switch off or if one of them is pushed right up on the, with the strikers to trying to create and they get caught and they get, we Wales can create that overload. And look, when you look at that Poland side, just going back to that, they kind of, uh, the way they line up out of possession is very, very similar to how they line up in possession. There's not too much of a change. So I think Wales may find themselves quite often with a bit of an overload in the middle of a park, unless one of the wing, wing backs tucks in, unless Fideski drops in. Wales will have that overload naturally with the two tens and the double pivot in against three players. And that added aggression and pace, I think we can cause some problems. And equally, what I said about um, Frankowski will look to get in behind Nico Williams when he pushes forward in the transition. They'll try and hit us on the break and get down the sides. I think Wales can do that as well. And um, <clears throat> I thought Brennan Johnson was quite quiet against Finland. I know he got his goal. He worked hard. He linked up really well, actually. I thought his link-up play was was actually better than I thought it was previously. Um, I was really impressed with his link-up play, which is something which you obviously lose when Kiefer Moore isn't there, that, that sort of uh, that focal point to link off. So I thought that was something that Brennan Johnson did do very well. And it's not that he played badly. I just thought he was quite quiet. Um, and I know, you know, we know that he can do more in terms of what he's capable of. And um, when that uh, that trio of, of Johnson, Brooks and Wilson becomes a front three, they're so fluid. It's, it's very difficult to mark from a defensive point of view. You know, you're going to have Bednarak, who's a very good defender and Kiwa, particularly good defenders. Um, look, like, they'll almost have to go 3v3 with Brooks, Wilson and Johnson. But Brooks and Wilson particularly, are so they drop so deep and they switch and they, they drop in deep, they drop in the pockets of space. And if the defenders do go 1v1 and follow them, that creates a space for Brennan Johnson to exploit. That creates a space for Nico Williams to exploit or Connor Roberts to exploit. And that is maybe one reason why when I looked at it, I was like, oh, could you play Daniel James as the right wing back to try and exploit the spaces created by Brooks and Wilson's movement? It's a bit of a risk. It would be very um, almost gun ho in terms of playing like an out and out winger stroke forward as your wing back. I think Daniel James is very capable of it. He's fit enough to just go up and down that right hand side all day long. But he's obviously in comparison to Conor Roberts, nowhere near as defensively capable. But he offers you so much more going forward. Um, but I do like, I, I, I kind of like Daniel James off the break. 
uh, off the bench and you can almost put him as the number nine and play on the break um, if the game's going your way. You've got Kiefer Moore, you've got Broadhead, Ramsey's there. I don't, I still think Ramsey's only been taken really to for his experience around this young squad. I don't think he's been taken to play. I think he's been taken to um, to be in and around the squad. And then if it goes to extra time, maybe we see him, you know, for 10 minutes or something to, to calm the team down. And because and Wales' average age was 25 against Finland. So, you know, Poland have a lot of experience in their side. But then Wales' side is so... Like it's it's young, you know, it's average age twenty five. But if you look at the the amount of caps that each individual has got, it's quite mental, like the amount of caps they've got for, for players at such a young age. And I think that's the one thing which Wales have done so well in in recent years is they've got these young players playing early. So that you know, Ethan Ampadu is twenty three. But he's played for Wales 50 times. Like, he's an experienced international footballer. And I just think that's massive to the way for Wales' future. Like, it's huge. Because in these big games like this, this is a high-pressure high, high pressure game. Everything's riding on it, you know? And if they were average age 25 and they all had a handful of caps think I'd be much more concerned you know Nico Williams the same 22 years old has played for Wales 37 times Ex fairly experienced international players and um yeah I as I said earlier on I very much am confident that Wales can give anyone a game at home on their day um I said before the Finland game, if Ethan Ampadu chucked a 9 out of 10 game, Wales would win. He did. They did. They dominated. And I think that central area is going to be massive for <clears throat> for Wales. And in terms of if we can create the overloads and dominate the middle of the park again, I expect us to win again. Um, we obviously need to be as cl clinical. Um, Jamie Edwards says in the comments, uh, Harry Wilson on a different level, to be fair, at the moment, still waiting to see the big product from Brennan, considering he went for fifty million to uh, to Spurs. Yeah, I hundred percent agree with you. With that mid, I think um, I said in my five things we learned afterwards is like uh, Harry Wilson was the one who got the man of the match on the TV and everything, and I hundred percent understood that and almost agreed with it. The only reason I wouldn't have given him man of the match is because I thought Ethan Ampadu was so good. And uh, we watched Ethan Ampadu really closely on the watch long. We spent a few minutes just just watching him and, and he was just outstanding. But um, I agree with you, mate. Harry Wilson has been excellent for Fulham all season. And I think he's going to be a massive asset to Wales in the coming years. He's, uh, he's a bit more experienced than some of the other, other players. He's a bit older, uh, only a little bit, mind. And I think um, he's an experienced footballer amongst young players but he hasn't always got his opportunities that he probably was due in a Wales shirt because he had uh, Aaron Ramsey in front of him however Aaron Ramsey is obviously coming to the end of his his international career certainly and I I feel that um this is going to be Harry Wilson you know Harry Wilson's 27 he's in his peak he's playing top level um top level stuff for his club and Boy, oh boy, did he turn up when Wales needed him on Thursday evening. And I hope he can do it again. And do you know what struck me? Like, and I've been saying and other people have been saying how Ethan Ampadu is the next Wales captain. And I think that he is the next Wales captain. But I wouldn't be surprised if Harry Wilson got it. If you watch him in the media and how he was talking, what a level-headed guy. Says all the right things. Really impressed by him um, on and off the pitch. And it's, it's going to be fascinating. In terms of who to, who's going to be vital to Wales or the one to watch for Wales, I said Ampadu against Finland. I really do feel that if Ampadu chucks another 9 out of 10, we won't be far off. But um, for the sake of changing it up a little bit, I'm going to go with, um, with Nico Williams. 
Nico Williams was exceptional going forward on Thursday. Uh, what I feel we need from Nico Williams this week or on Tuesday is he needs to be as good going forward, but he also needs to be up and down that left-hand side because Frankowski on the right-hand side of Poland's side is the danger man. And Nico needs to be aware of that. But also Ampadu normally slots in on that side and Ampadu will cover. And if you watch, when Nico Williams goes bobbing forward, if the ball breaks down or the play breaks down and it goes down that right-hand side, Ampadu comes across, James comes across and Connor Roberts will slot in. So you'll end up with Roberts and James in the middle in front of the back three and Ampadu will be the sort of default de facto left back until Nico Williams is back very well drilled and obviously this the other the other way it goes James Nico Williams and they all shift across it's, it's very well drilled and uh, it's, it's clever look it's tactically clever and Robert Page doesn't always get the credit tactically um and by me as well I've, I've criticized some of his in-game decisions and things like that one thing you've got to say is that against Finland he was brave and he got his selection and his tactics spot on. Wales blew Finland away at the start of the first half and the start of the second half. And I would love for us to start that quickly against Poland. Yes, Poland, they're going to be hard. But if you can get an early goal or two, it's a big game. And if they find themselves 2-0 down after half an hour, Poland have to come at you then. They have to take risks. And then... You can utilise the pace of Nico Williams. You can utilise the creativity of, of Brooks and Wilson. You can utilise Brennan Johnson just in behind all the time on the break. And then, you know, off the bench, then you've got the likes of Matondo and Daniel James. You can, you know, you could play, if you if you can get to a period where you tune up, you could play Daniel James as a number nine. Out of possession, you can sit in and make it very compact and difficult to play against. And then when you win the ball, you break a pace with Williams and James and, and the rest. But look, Poland's going to be a very, very difficult game. I see that um, Poland are slight favourites with the bookies. I believe that Wales, on their day at home at the Cardiff City Stadium, can beat anyone. I believe in this team. I believe that no team, no team in football wants to play against pace and energy in the press and, and in the middle of midfield. And that is Wales' strongest area for me. So, yes, we need big games from your Anne Perdue's, your Jordan James's, these young footballers, but they're more than capable. They've shown time and time again, they're more than capable. And then you just need the experience of your Rodons, your Davis, your Ward, Harry Wilson, to just keep it on the level, keep it calm. And hopefully Wales can start quick and uh, we'll be going to Germany in the summer. Um, predictions, please drop your predictions in the comment section underneath this video. You can put it in the live chat as well, but it helps us out massively if you can go to the YouTube video and put it in the comments. Predictions to let us know what you think the score will be. I'm going to go with 3-1 uh, Wales. I just fancy us. Uh, Rodri's in the chat. There you go. Um, good to see you, mate. See you on Tuesday for the watch along. Feeling good. 3 1 Wales, mate. That's what I just said. Well, in Rodders. Um, yes, indeed. I uh, drop you. Let me know what your predictions are. I just fancy Wales. I've got to be honest. If they can get the same atmosphere, the same start, the same energy and aggression. And like I said, the that that double pivot of Ampadu and James is just so good. But that middle four. Uh, laterally, of Connor Roberts, uh, Jordan James, Ampadu, and Nico Williams is so well drilled to kind of invert and drop in and cover each other. And then the box of Jordan James, Ampadu, Brooks, and Wilson is so well drilled at creating an overload in the middle of the pitch. Like Wales dominated the midfield versus uh, Finland, and they need to do that against Poland. I really, really do fancy Wales. Hopefully, that doesn't come to bite me on the bum. Um, but it's also going to be vital that Wales defend their box better um, in and around that box 
you've got Jordan James and Ampadu need to be aware, more aware of what's behind them. And Roden needs to not be as flat-footed because if you get Lev- if Lewandowski gets a chance in that 18-yard box, he will tuck it away and you could find yourself conceding a couple of quick goals and then the pressure's on the other way. So Wales really need to be switched on and uh, play with the same intensity and levels that they did this past uh, this past Thursday. It's going to be a big game. If you're not going to the game, join us for the watch along on Tuesday night. Um, we'll have the Cardiff City phone in on the channel tomorrow. And I'm sure they'll be discussing the Welsh game. Um, and then Wednesday, we'll have the Flower Hour. Thursday, we'll have five, maybe Thursday, a Flower Hour. Well, I don't know. We'll have five things we learned from Wales v Poland. And, uh, and then the international break will be done. Uh, we've got a podcast with former Cardiff City captain uh, Roger Gibbons coming soon, among other things. Make sure you check uh, Ace Podcast Nation and stuff like that. We have Roger Giggs show on Thursday, among many other things. Lots of content coming your way, lots of interviews and uh, analysis, previews, all that good stuff. But until then, I bid you a farewell. As always, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you Tuesday for the watch along. Come on, Wales. Nice one.